Hello everyone, welcome to Bargain Gaming, where we can play excellent games without busting our wallets. Uh, in the last episode, this is episode 4 of Bloodborne. In the last episode, we upgraded our saw cleaver to a plus 1. Uh, and wh what I forgot to mention was that pressing the options button brings us to the settings menu and pressing X we have to go down to exit game to exit the game this would be the proper way of exiting the game uh, the reason I say this is that if we're not in the hunter's dream let's say we're outside in the outside world not in this safe haven when we're in the outside world if you quit the game because you close the machine or in what, however regard you quit the game the game is not saved uh, or the game will treat as if you had died so the next time you log back in all the monsters would have respawned and you will log back in very likely at the last lamp that you touch uh, or here in hunter's dream so that means uh, if you're in the game and you don't want to go through the pest monsters again the best way to quit the game is to use the uh, options button, button go to the settings menu and exit the game normally when you do that whatever you have done up to that point will be saved so when you log back in uh, then everything will be is a status quo so that's one point I forgot to mention now we can talk to German. This his guy's German. Ah, uh -huh. uh, you must be the. He he's the guy who the injected us with dream. the blood that allows us now this to be I able to heal you. ourselves using so, blood vials. You're sure to be in a fine haze about now. But also, don't just go out and, and kill, kill a few, a few beasts. beasts. It's for your you own know, good. It's just what hunters do. So he, in fact, he in effect drafted us into the hunter's game so we are an unwitting player in this game but now that we have been forced to become a hunter we need to this go out was and hunt a safe haven for hunters a workshop where hunters used blood to enhance we don't, don't have, have as many one. you're welcome to use whatever you for even the dog Should wow this guy is mean let's talk to him this again this was once uh, it a was a repeat so that's done and here is another little anecdote <laughs> so in essence the main story arc is yeah there's a plague that is causing all of these people or or, or that's causing people to turn into beast so p this <laughs> right now of note this guy is only one but as soon as we progress through more of the game or we kill some bosses so this doll is currently not animated anyway let us go back we have now a a better weapon uh, so we can go back to central yarn hum again the first floor is where we started that was the clinic where we have we met up with that uh, almost dead werewolf let's go through there again and then uh, central yarn hum is the second lamp we we lit when we climbed those ladders uh it i think it would be uh beneficial for us to go through the whole uh exercise again because then we build up more uh blood echoes so yeah this is where we started or rather we came downstairs yeah from down those stairs okay but this time around there are no more oh this were our blood echoes when we first died so we never picked it up okay good okay <laughs> that's why that's something i have to constantly remind myself that we have to look around because or i have to look around uh for everyone here because uh there's always the danger of missing something you know it's just a waste if we if we miss it had we died that would have been lost to us for 
forever. Like, that's 320 blood echoes. At this early part of the game, 320 blood echoes is almost half a level, I think. Okay, so look, this guy lying on the ground. Yeah. It's hard to see him. So, this target lock is actually very helpful. Let's just go through uh, where we went and uh, we will be... It's actually good practice for us to, uh, so that our moves are a little more smooth and a little uh, and we get used more to the fighting or to the uh, moves of the monsters. Okay, like this guy hiding behind that stack of destructible items. I find it uh, usually uh, better to move around them because uh, around to or behind them. If we can get behind a monster, that's the best way to to deliver uh, inflict damage without taking as much damage in return. This one allows us to group them together. Whenever we can do that, it's actually like now. It, it's actually a oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought I got this thing down. Apparently not. So we've done these guys before. So and this guy, sleeping guy. We'll pick up bullets from this guy. Cool. Oh, the guy must have dropped the uh, blood. Uh, oh, silver bullets too. Also. And then the guy hiding around the corner. So, uh, again, yeah, these guys are easy now because if you, uh, I almost said it too early. Almost got clobbered by this guy. Anyway, uh, that's why uh, I I'm getting more comfortable with comfortable with the with the moves of these guys. Oh, the, the. now I group them by the staircase. That's a that's always a good point to hit them from. Drop something? Cool. So I don't want to kill these two guys because there is that shooter down there. Right there. And if, while we're taking this guys on, he will be standing there taking his time shooting at us. So I'd rather not give him that pleasure. As they say. Uh, are there, oh, there are a couple of roamers here. So let's just clean this up. So they're right almost at now that we're better used to them, it's like almost free experience. Oh, this fire, we, this fire is dangerous to us. So if we push our, our opponents into it or we ourselves get into it, we get damaged. So fire is fire. So <laughs> it doesn't recognize friends or foe. So we just have to go clear this bunch up again okay all right okay that rifleman is on his own so now we have a clear shot of him and be careful there's another one oh i hate i hate these guys with the with the uh, pitchfork they have such a long reach That uh, it is, we you know they can hit us and uh, from quite a long ways away. Now we got that guy. So, oh, let's go for the oh the two guys that have roamed. Are there, are there two guys by the door? No, have they gone there? Not yet. Oh, there are two guys coming down. So we'll wait for them. So this game takes some level of discipline instead of just charging down there and. 
uh, hitting them, uh, it forces you to exercise some level of discipline. Uh, in my first go at this game, <laughs> you know, the first four hours was so frustrating for me because, yeah, I can take out one guy one on one, but then, you know, then I get mobbed, and then it was a process of dying, 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 and dying again. Where's the pooch? Where's the pooch? Can't stay around here long so that guy starts shooting. Now where are the two roamers? Okay, they went down. Oh, okay. We have this guy with the with a useless shield. It it does actually uh, block the first blow, but then that's it. Okay, let's we can come over this way. And then let uh, hide behind the post here. And let those two roamers walk all the way down. Uh, again a little patience and just blindly charge forward, which would be which was why my normal approach and the reason why I died so many times. The first four hours was ridiculously frustrating. Okay. Now, he used to be able to group them together like this. Okay, let's go get the, uh, the bullets from this guy. Okay, and then heal ourselves. Did we miss anything? I hope we did not. We did not. Okay, we destroyed those things. So there's another party going on here. There's another door we can knock on. Ah, uh, see, with the lighted lantern, that means there are people in there. I don't reckon you're from round here. Well, stuck outside of the night of the hunt. Oh, you poor, poor thing. Yeah, yeah. See, there are like. Parting as if I uh, well, it makes sense. So some of them it might be the last night Let's get rid of some of these free experience here So sometimes they drop pebbles uh, Pebbles are not that uh, they're useful, but they don't do as much damage. Okay, let now hopefully our Now we can kill them with that 10% increase in damage. We can deal more damage. So again, I will harken back to why I prefer stamina. So we can deal a lot more damage because we can we can swing more times. And those guys over there, yeah, can they see us? Let's let's attract them. Yep, that dog sees us. Whoa. Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, the shooter is behind them. So can we attract these two guys? Yep, we can. That uh, was a good way to use that. I try to use whatever, uh, whatever parts of the game that uh, allows me to do that like going around the corner as they come around the corner I can hit them from there so that's a weak point so I consider that as part of gameplay because well that was designed that way and there I draw them in and I tackle them one at a time so I figured that's part of gameplay now we have gone through this all through of these through this area before uh, including this last place now this is going this is a place that will lead us to the sewers now we check this guy over here uh, how about here nothing here 
Ooh, there it is. I almost missed this one. Another stone shard. Cool. Cool, cool. So, uh, I don't remember saying this. If I said this before, uh, let me re repeat it. The first upgrade to plus one for all weapons requires three stone shards. Level two upgrade requires uh, five stone shards. And uh, level three upgrade requires eight stone shards. So right now we have... Uh, so th that's the sewers. Right now checking how many stone shards do we have? We have two. Now these... Is there another level down here? Yeah, there is another level down here. Let me climb down one level. Ouch, it, it was a relatively long drop. Uh, these guys are called... These guys, the next one's coming up, they're tougher. And they have the potential of dropping a stone shard or monsters like them. Uh, they're relatively tougher. And I call them like uh, semi-werewolves. They are almost werewolves. See, they have... They're all furry. They're all... Uh, and they don't, uh, they don't talk anymore. Dropping down and hitting... And hitting R1 delivers... Dropping down on them and hitting R1 delivers a jump... Uh, a drop down attack, which deals a significant amount of damage. Now, there is another one over here. And on the left, on the corner, is like a bold werewolf. But it carries a very long weapon, and that weapon has an extremely long reach. I will, I will call that guy, uh, like the Spearman. That is, that's an even tougher mob than this uh, semi-werewolf. So we can use these stairs to climb all the way back up to where we came down from. So let me uh, finish this semi-werewolf first. It, it doesn't it, 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 it doesn't look human anymore it's just humanoid shape before I tackle the other guy uh, let's go up here to again to show you how this game is built in such a way that or designed in such a way that we can go up and down so this is like a shortcut now that we can climb up and climb down without taking that damage so further up and we have just a little so here here is where we started before we jump down and okay uh, again this uh, episode is getting a bit on the long side so maybe time to cut it here and the best way to get out of the game is to press the options button go to the settings and go all the way down to exit the game and say yes using the d-pad so thank you for joining me in this game i had a lot of fun and i hope you guys did too hope to see you again in the next episode bye